What's cracking, you crazy people? Welcome back to a brand oh, wow. new Table Talk Podcast. It's your boys, the Mings. We are ready to verbally assault your eardrums. I'm this today is every day. What an episode already! Okay. I'm so excited. Uh, okay. If you're listening to this, it's probably a Monday. If it's not, then I'm. Ho- I hope you're off to a great new week. It's mm. December. It's a beginning. Look a lot like Christmas. It is probably Christmas. If it's- you're listening to this at, at any point. In December, congrats, you made it through a uh, another decade. But you know, in, in certain parts of Malaysia, it might not be looking like Christmas. It might be looking like Chinese New Year. Oh my goodness, Unfortunately. already. It's already happening. I, I, I'm i I'm disgusted. It's all it's all red. Why don't you just hang the ang paos on the trees and save yeah, people, people some time? Okay. Yeah. Uh, but 2019 uh, has been a crazy year. Mm. Uh, and you know, drawing to a close for the year, we wanted to take time to reflect. Okay. About the year, about our lives, about careers, you know, and, okay. and there are a couple of topics that have been floating about about yes. in the podcast sphere, right. especially on our podcast. Okay. Uh, things to do about career. You just want to give a shout out to everyone listening to podcasts and tagging us on Spotify. Yeah, man. Thanks for having I us in your the, yearly roundup. One of one of them like clocked in 3,000 minutes of podcasts. Do we about, have 3,000 minutes of I, podcasts? I feel like we might. It's not just us. No, it's just us. Oh, just they listen to three thousand minutes of no, the no, takeaway no, no. table. Know, Forty episodes, thirty-nine episodes, thirty episodes times. Like let's say average to half an hour. Let me do. Let me do. Let me do some math. We're not very good. Let uh, me do some math. Six hundred hours maybe. Sixty times thirty. No, That's a no, thousand eight. Nowhere close. Nowhere close. You that that fellow probably listened to each podcast twice. And well, whoever you are. Thank you. We thank you. Well, for everyone else who's watching the video podcast on YouTube, you should probably, by the way. Mm-hmm. We have a very special guest with us. Who um, you, what you do? Before That's she, your cue, by no, the way. <laughs> oh, sorry. Before she introduces <laughs> oh, herself, okay. I feel like we need to set this up properly. Oh, right. Okay. Um, no, you know what? Introduce yourself. Who you, what you do? <laughs> thank you, Ming. <laughs> That's a new way of introduction. Okay, who you? <laughs> who me? What name? My name is Mei Ling. What do you? I do digital work. I do right. work in digital marketing. I do a bit of PR and you? I create some content. Yes. Sometimes with you guys. Uh, with us sometimes. Mm-hmm. Digital storyteller. Digital storyteller. Digital storyteller. <laughs> yes, I yes yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm looking I at you. I didn't get that for anywhere. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Brian, Brian dug it up. I just used it. So, yeah. we, so <sighs> well, how, mailing, do I, how do I say this? Mailing has been one of the people we've met in our journey making digital content. Uh, we've kind of gotten to know you for like at least two years. Minimum, I mean, minimum two minimum, years. Minimum, but maybe a little bit and more. And she represents yeah. part of the world that I wish more of the world could be. Uh, you trust creators surprisingly a lot. We've <laughs> to had, my detriment. Yes, we've, oh, had, my we've, had, we've had conversations where I'm pretty sure 50% of my my sentences are, are you sure? <laughs> yeah, no. I get that a lot. Yes. Uh, but no, for real, I, the mm-hmm. fact that even we got mailing uh, to be here with us today is, uh, I didn't think it would happen. Yeah, uh, there's some ideas thrown in the it air. It might not still happen. And also, <laughs> she might walk. She's threatened to walk out. So on this be, before people start asking, like, actually, what am I listening to? Yeah. Um, mailing, you've done a lot of jobs. I'm a lot older than all of you, and probably <laughs> oh. all of you who are listening. I just got called ma'am. <laughs> oh, ma'am, ma'am. Okay, she's done a lot of jobs, not because she's been fired, but she's really, <laughs> yeah. she's done a lot of things to get to where she is today. She in, works with a global brand. A global beauty uh, a brand. A leading brand. Leading. Um, and I thought that, oh, Ming, you thought that it'd be pretty interesting to bring her on because one of uh, the, the kind of questions we get for the show is it, it, it usually relates to like career yeah, okay. and how this new generation can find jobs and passion and fulfillment in what they do and not change their job every two years. Yeah. And because you know, everyone gets offended so easily. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, like, oh, this bit, like, little bit of stress. This is not yeah. my passion. All right. And, and, <laughs> and, and mailing is the perfect person to talk to about it because she talks to us about this uh, quite regularly. I think like, you know, uh, we'll have to deal with than, you guys. M- more than work. <laughs> yeah. uh, the friendship that we've, we've uh, had and developed over these few years has been a very real one. And I feel like we've had the honor and the opportunity for mailing speaking to our lives. Oh, wow. to remind us about things that are like, hey, that's, that's okay. important. Okay. Oh, this one you can look back tomorrow. What is really Need important is you need to book a reservation for yeah. your meals. You have to. Otherwise, you'll run around the mall for at least a good 20 minutes that's trying a, to find a, a spot to sit down. Yeah. That's a <laughs> very interesting meeting. principle that uh, mailing lives by. But no, okay. So <laughs> let, let's let's bring it back to yeah. mailing. Everything that you've done, you've been in very fast-paced industries. Very. Uh, can you tell us more about that? Walk us through your life story. What do you graduate in? Yeah. Well, it's interesting. So I started out very 
okay, as I said, I'm a lot older. So I started, <laughs> <laughs> I, started, <laughs> I started out very traditionally. So I had to go to school. I had to get a degree and I had to do all that stuff. And then it when I came right. up, yep, yeah, that's yeah. about right. Yeah, yeah. When I left uni, I got a job um, and it wasn't even something that I was kind of sort of trained in. It was okay. just something I just tried so that I could get my feet wet. What do you study uh, as a degree and what was your first job? So I studied, uh, so <laughs> I started like, with, mar- I'm laughing okay, because okay. I started with a marketing degree. Okay, okay. And then very, very soon after I discovered, hey, it's actually not that fun. Oh, it's actually oh. a little bit dry. No, oh. it's a very dry subject. Okay, okay. It's, and I've, I, and I tend to be a little bit more dreamy. My okay. mom would tell you that all the time. Okay. So then after that, I quickly, and thankfully they were slightly supportive, although mm. they were hoping for an accountant, mm. <laughs> um, mm. as most Chinese parents would. Yes, we know the fields, don't worry. Yes. <laughs> so, but they supported and I ended up doing a degree in communications. Oh, okay. But it was a broad degree, so it wasn't just comms. So you have two degrees? No, I don't. I you swapped. Dropped out I dropped out and right. I stopped it. Yeah. So, yeah. so I swapped over um, and so thankfully some of the credits worked, but it oh, was, I okay. did a bit of comms. I did a bit of creative writing. Right. I even did a little bit of photography, although I really, oh really do goodness. suck at wow. it. No, 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 no. My photography okay. skills suck. Okay. So I'll be the first to say this. Okay. okay. Um, so then I graduated and then I came back to KL because I really, really missed my family and everyone else Wait, stayed back. I was in Australia. Australia. Okay. Contact. Yeah. Contact is so Which important. Part? Melbourne. Melbourne. <laughs> wow. Hence wow. the accountancy degree. Living the life before life was lived. <laughs> I oh my Precisely. Lord. Lattes were two Australian dollars. Oh my <laughs> Lord. So you what literally, a time. What? I can see everyone's eyes just drop like, opened what? up. Oh my so now Lord. you have an Two. idea of how old okay. I am. Okay. Two dollars. Uh, and you came back to you came back to KL and yeah. you jumped into I started selling yachts. Sorry, what? I did not With even an accounting know. Degree. Sorry, you no. sold, <laughs> Sorry, what? Oh. You sold yachts. Yeah. From that was who my who first job. There were yacht, there are yachts in Malaysia? Yes. Where, where? Langkawi. Klang. Port Dixon, Langkawi, uh, oh. Singapore, Johor. Who are you selling from and, and where to? did you get the yachts from? That's a lot of questions. Yeah, I mean, so okay, where okay. do I start? Okay, <laughs> where, how did this happen? <laughs> Give us the breakdown, the summary of, of, of the, the yacht phase. The y- well, my friend, I knew a friend who was actually doing marketing and PR for this company. And it was a small company based out in Penang. Okay. They were a small outfit. It was literally family run. I'm sure you guys understand how that works. Okay. And they said, we needed someone to help you out. Okay. So I literally went in there and was Sold. working with my boss. We were in a room very similar to this right now, oh, the size. Minus the yachts. Well, no, there were no wow. yachts because oh, okay. we were the, we were the office. Sense. Okay. And, but she was very encouraging. I learned a lot from her, especially about being independent. Yeah. And because she wasn't always around because she was also selling yachts. yachts. <laughs> Okay. It's true. So you met, you met, essentially you met a Penang family that sells yachts. Literally, yes. And you somehow got involved with that. Yes. Tickle, tickle my curiosity. <laughs> is that even a phrase? Uh, it is now. Okay. One pop of a yacht. How much are we looking at? One pop it of did, a yacht. Actually, it's the funniest thing about yachts. I mean, this was many, many years ago. It's really not as expensive as you think. You can literally buy a really small one. And I, off the top of my head, it's about five figures. Five High figures. five figures. Okay. But to be fair, you might die. You, you, no, 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 you, oh, will, oh. you will die maintaining it. Okay. And that's what I learned okay. very, very early on. Right, right, it's right. not actually about buying it. It's about maintaining it. It's about maintaining, it's about maintaining okay. it. Because okay. no, 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 it needs I believe, to sit somewhere. Yeah, I believe that I actually choose a car based on the service station that I go to. It's not even just okay. the so the servicing is the least of your concerns. Oh, that, you yeah. can't park your yacht in your front yard. Yeah. Oh, you can. You, 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 <laughs> no, you oh, oh did not occur to me. Sorry. <laughs> well, you could. Oh, you need to actually buy a lot. Somewhere you don't out even there. buy. You rent. You rent oh, a parking goodness. space, and then you need to pay for people to make sure that <laughs> yeah. doesn't fall apart. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Wow. Because it's the sea. No, 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 no. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Right, so right. it's at the maintenance of it is the one that kills you. So mm. you buying it is really not an issue. Right. If you can buy a car, well, give or take, you, you could probably buy a could. Yacht. You probably okay. could. Not but a big you one. probably couldn't maintain the yacht. You would go to hell okay. trying to oh, maintain understand. the yacht. Okay. So after so the yeah. yacht season of your life, what do you jump into? My main passion, and even though, even from a very, very young age, I think a lot of my friends actually told me that I was very lucky to know very early on, because I know a lot of people were very, it was very hard to go into university and pick a degree, because yes. you don't, re- at that age, you don't really know what you want to do. You have some idea, Yes. but for me, it was very clear. I've always enjoyed writing. 
You mm. are incredible so, at writing. From mm. no, not really. But from an early age, I've always I've always been doodling and writing, and 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 I was always a bit of a dreamer in, uh, in class. Mm. So I happened to meet another person. So it's a lot of accidental chances through life. Yeah. So mm. I met someone who was then launching a magazine for Astro. Oh wow! Okay. So then they hired me as a freelancer. Oh. Um, so I did about styling work, and then oh. I remember my creative director was looking at me. He was like, "I'm not sure if this girl's gonna pull through, but let's give her a shot." Oh my gosh! <laughs> and okay. I remembered I loaded. They gave me one thing. I ran through the whole of Sungai Wang. The theme was Medeka. Whoa! Uh, I I ran through the whole of Sungai Wang, grabbing whatever items I could remember that was Malaysian themed. Okay. And I loaded it all, all into my car. So I had a, my back seat was full of like outfits and bags and shoes and whatever have you. Right. And I dragged it to the studio on a Saturday with the photographer and I didn't iron anything. <gasps> he was mad. Oh, okay. Because okay. I spent like one hour apologizing going, with the steamer going, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, <laughs> oh I'm, so God, sorry yeah. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. But that was one of the things that taught me very early on that I should be prepared. Mm. Or I should ask. Mm. Um, so I learned that don't just run in, run aimlessly through Fast forward. Well, that's forward. True. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's Fast true. Basically, couple of years. You, you already know what it's going to be like if you're running aimlessly through Sungai Wang. Well, it wasn't very. It, it's not very fun, especially when you run into very very angry shop assistants mm. okay. who don't really have time for you when you go to a high. And literally, it was like cold calling. I would go up to the cashier, "Hi, I really want to borrow this shoe. How do I do it?" Mm. Uh, uh, and then she'd be like, "Oh, you call the office lah. This is the number." And she'll give you a random office. I was once. I was put on hold. I got the runaround for like three days to get a pair of shoes oh to goodness. load. But you learn. Okay, so okay. I, I don't, I don't, I'm, I, I don't like the process. Right. But I appreciated the process. Right. Oh my goodness! And then fast forward a couple of years, you mm. were the editor. Oh, I did. <laughs> how the heck did that happen? Uh, so I had a lot of people who believed in me. I was also very, and I was very thankful for that. So I, when they offered. When I started freelancing with this other title, they then offered me a full-time position, which I took. And then I saw another opening, um, which I tried for. And because the other one was more lifestyle-driven, yeah. this one was fashion and beauty, which yeah. I really, really loved because I always dreamed of being in Vogue, which I never <laughs> That was always a little girl's dream. Shout out Vogue. Yeah. If so, you're listening. <laughs> and then um, after that, I took. they gave me the opportunity to do fashion and beauty. I took mm. it. And I just progressively worked through there and they believed in what I did, I guess. It's crazy. I don't know. I, I, that one, honestly, I can't tell you because I just worked, so I did my best. Mm. When, when, you were, when, you were, uh, when you were the queen. Huh? No, not really. Top of the hill. <laughs> right. well, you, not was it all queens. like, was it Devil Wears Prada every day? <laughs> I need to know this. The industry is very competitive. <gasps> right. okay. It is. Right. It's not Devil Wears Prada. Um, there are some people who maybe try to okay. be that because I think a lot of the industry, and I love the people who I work with to this very, uh, who mm. I used to work with to this very mm. day and who I know. Mm. Um, a lot of it, I think it's a persona. If you actually, because people want to believe this, they watch yes. the movies yes. or they read the magazines or I mean, they read the articles about on page six or whatever it is right, and they, right. they want to believe that. But in actual fact, if you Dug down and, and we used to hang around after an event and stuff like that. A lot of them are actually, they Little have people. lives like yeah. you and me. They They're go back home. People. They have the same stresses. Right. It's just that they have to put on this persona because as an editor, you had to be larger than life. You had because to. you were a personality. <sighs> So that was you. You were you were the OG influencer. Oh. Not really, because I always kind of I really the one thing I liked about being an editor was the fact that I could kind of hung out behind the scenes, although my mm. salesperson didn't really like it very much because she mm. couldn't sell me. <laughs> um, oh, wow, okay. But I liked that my team could go front. Wow. How long did it take from you running around Sungai Wang to, to being an editor? editor. Mm. Wow, I can't remember. So um, At least six years? About there, five years? Five Give years. Give or take five, You're just good, years. that's why. But right. I will be the first to say this. Um, I got really lucky mm. because... Um, my boss saw an opportunity for me. Right. And when her boss asked her, she actually recommended me. Yeah. Because oh, nice. she believed in what right. I could do. Yeah, right. Nice. And it was nice. Because I, I think that's one of the one things that's lacking nowadays. Everything is so fast. Mm. You don't get to develop talent. Correct. Well, well, that brings us full circle <laughs> to uh, where you are today mm. in a leading, uh, one, yeah, the, probably the one of the leading brands beauty brand in the world. Mm. Uh, and you've been there for a while and you've seen how the, 
I guess the the market and the people coming in out of the market has changed as well. Yes. Uh, what we want to touch and talk about today in the podcast is the fact that there is a very different style of working today. Right? <laughs> From when you started off as a, <laughs> as a young, we, fresh graduate. We got to clean that up a bit. By style of working, we mean the idiots that are coming into the workforce. Correct. Yeah. You said that, I did I, I, That's why we're doing a podcast. This is, this is a free world right we're here. We're going to be real honest <laughs> today. So I feel like sometimes we get... Um, uh, for everyone who's listening, because this is something that even Ming and I go through as well. Sometimes we get bogged down with all our stresses and the things that are like, you know, troubling us in mm. life. And then we just feel, ah, oh, I want to give up, right? And then a lot, to, to some people, changing jobs is the best solution. You run. You run away, right? Mm. And then he's like, oh, new job because I couldn't handle the last one. Mm, sounds like how you handle your relationships. I Ooh. didn't say that. We'll talk about something oh, else. Sorry, we'll, sorry. we'll talk about that another time. I'm not telling me, um, I'm telling you, you guys out yeah, there. Sapa rasa, dia makan chili, eh? Did I say that wrong? Kencing manis. Okay. Um, but no, so like, what was that like? Mm. from then and now because I'm, I'm sure you've had your fair share of people uh, yeah w- to just to win I'm pretty sure not everyone are idiots yeah not everyone I'm, yeah. there are amazing people out there Correct. but what did it feel like when you started to realise like you're on that side of the table now <laughs> that needed to say like should this person be here <laughs> no because because a lot of okay, just just give people some background from, uh, I guess understanding of this right. uh, we have a lot of conversations with mailing about stresses in life. Yes, um, because I'm usually the stress. Oh, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. But sometimes we talk about, you know, how some uh, how some people, uh, everyone manages stress and perceives stress very differently. Yes. Some more than others. Some some have like mini- like physical manifestations, like they have white hair or they, they get hives and they die. Seizures, eczema. Seizures. But some people just internalize it. Um. Um, so when it comes to stress, right, today, do you think there is more stress today than there was before? Is that a valid reason to why people can't can't yeah. even today? Or oh, has stress just evolved with humankind? Have <laughs> <laughs> we just romanticized the idea of yeah. being stressed? Yeah, right? for real. What I, what do you think? Well, I think in a very strange way, you probably are right. I think there's the romanticization of stress. Mm. But I remember this thing that and my husband shares this with me sometimes as mm. well. Um, and he's very wise, unfortunately, which I hate. <laughs> my goodness. Okay. Um, so delicately. Mm. No, but the thing is, is that I think even like your parents, my parents or whatever it is, or even myself, mm. um, when we were stressed with work, with life or whatever it was, mm. we just had no choice and we had to just go on, get yeah. on with it. Right. Because there were other things to worry about, whether right. it was putting food on the table right. or whether it was, I need to do my next thing or my next right. shoot or whatever it is. We just kind of went, okay, you know what? We'll just get this done and then we'll right. move on to the rest, the right. next one. Having said that, at the same time, we don't really also, I think a lot of people also don't have this thing where, because everything is now digital. Mm. You, want, you want your packages delivered next day delivery. Mm. You want it in two hours. Mm. I mean, that creates a whole different level of stress. I, the one thing I, you know what I, when I first had my first mobile phone, I used to be so excited. Like when messages came through, et cetera, et cetera. And all these things. No, it's not right. No, now it's not. It is a tool of the devil. (laughs) I'm sorry, (laughs) but I, (laughs) it's not the same joy anymore. It's It's the lady with two phones. (laughs) Precisely. But it's, and it's the thing is, is that it's, my phones, both my phones go ping, 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 mm. non-stop. Mm, mm. And everyone expects a, a reply immediately. immediately yeah. Which in those days, you had, I had a conversation this morning and I had to use the landline. Mm. And then this other person who had to pick up to like, wow, you're calling me from a landline. I have not had to deal with this in a really long time. I'm like, right, yeah, yes. but it's guess true. what? The line is stable. Yeah, and exactly, I know everyone's exactly. line is not stable at the mm, moment. It's not. Correct. Mm. So, you used to wait, mm. or at least you had a little bit of patience. You wait, like say maybe you give 24 hours yeah. to get a reply. Yeah. Now you send an email and then you send a WhatsApp. Hey, did you get my email? Lah? Yeah, immediately yeah. after Which you sent it. Precisely. Which may still be in the outbox, by the way. Mm. Not only is it in the outbox, between you sending out the email and you WhatsApping the person, have, have you read my email? Haven't even read finished yet. Correct. <laughs> you read also, uh, yeah. yeah. Cannot digest oh, it. Correct. So, and I used to tell, like when I deal with my agencies and they laugh all the time, I'm telling them, mm. I know you sent me an email and I know I have like five or six or 10 or 200 to reply, but you give me a little bit of time. I need to read properly mm. and give you a proper reply. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think, is missing today in communications. Mm, man. You need to take a step back. You need to breathe. 
Man. And then you formulate your reply. I like that, yeah. Because if not, then you're going to have a say, oh no, I didn't mean to say that. I didn't mean to, this is not what I meant to say. It's taken out of context mm. right, because right, you didn't right. have time to think. Yeah. Wow, guys. I feel like if, if you go and take notes in your car right now, if you're listening to that, that's the first one you should probably do. Uh, there's so Free many- Free take time to internalize and Good digest Lord. it, man. There's so many uh, deeper sociological <laughs> values that we can spin this off into. No, but it's true because with how things have become, last time I felt like we appreciated communication because Correct. it was expensive. Agreed. Every, mm. every 160 characters you type costs you 20 freaking cents. Mm. Today you can spam the dot and dot and dot, dot, question mark, dot, dot, Yes. Individual messages on its own. Correct. Right? You get hi, one message. Hi. No. How, are, how, how you one. <laughs> okay. Sorry, wrong I'm sorry, mainly. <laughs> I Oops. feel like you're personally yeah. attacking me right now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Last time we actually had to spell check and make sure we were using each 160 characters yeah. to its ultimate value Correct. before we sent it. Wow. And, and when technology kind of became free, so did our communication. Yes. The value of it dropped to a sense where I guess like, you, you're right, you could send an email and send a WhatsApp right after the set. And Correct. To me, in my mind, if someone does that, like, why don't you just call me? Yes. Because like, if it's that urgent, you should yeah. not be writing messages Correct. anymore. Correct. Correct. And then I think it goes, oh my gosh, it goes on to like, uh, I guess stress these days is really because of the expectation of how quick need, things need to be. Yes. And, and being in that, uh, you, you definitely live in the all like fast moving uh, products uh, yeah. industry. Speed is everything. Speed is everything. It's very important to be speed. But then yeah. that's also when you get into the problems of things. And I'm not talking about any industry. I think it's actually prevalent right. across the board. It's not yeah. a specific industry. You get problems with, oh, I'm unhappy with this because it came, it delivered, it wasn't nice, it broke right, right, in two right. days. I mean, and people, exp and, and yeah. I get frustrated when people say that, oh, I can buy this. And then, oh, if it's not nice, I threw wheeler. Mm. Then you get into another whole other problems, which is now bubbling up, which is right. sustainability. Let's talk. Choice. Yeah. Okay. Right. Before we talk about it, I'm so yeah, sorry. Yeah, okay. I no, want to talk about the, the like how you even presented a statement um, that that that's the current mindset, right? Like you buy something or you get something, you don't like it. True lah. True way. I have Correct. options, right? And linking back to the topic that we're talking yeah. ahead. So as I was saying, I think like what you just said about how people buy things and then just return it. And then there's, whole, there's a whole problem of sustainability. It also mm. applies to other areas of our lives. Yes. Today, you know, because we're so fast moving and everything is like, oh, there's an alternative option for it. Um, that's become the trend with careers, with <laughs> relationships. Mm. Um, uh. And I mean, we'll jump into the relationships one a little bit later. Another dime. A little maybe. bit later. Yeah. But um, I, I, why I, I guess we, we want to highlight this is because a mm. um, couple of years back, the magazine and publishing industry used to be, I, I mean, everyone knows this as well, used to be <coughs> the hell industry. It is, uh, it was the high pressure, mm. intense mm. industry. Fashion, uh, fashion, fashion, fashion magazines, buildings. fashion right? magazines. It always is, it still is probably. <laughs> it, it, but in not the same way that you'd probably think of it. That's mm. why well, I, I, don't know how to articulate it properly. Right. It is a very high pressure industry because the thing is, is that you have to think it's, it's very different from say when you, as an accountant, and I'm using an accountant as an example because I was supposed to be one, mm. where when you do your spreadsheets or whatever it is you're supposed to do on an Excel, see, I don't even know. Mm. Um, yeah. And then you just- and If you, you just, say PowerPoint, <laughs> I will be like, what? Correct. Oh. <laughs> but you just submit it and then you will pretty much then or you sit down with the client and then you run through it, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But when you, the pressure and the stress comes into play because it's on the newsstands. You're expecting people to Correct. pay money to a, for this. Yeah, there's like human mm. response to that as well. Correct. Because the numbers have, the numbers don't change. The numbers, are, they're Correct. there. Uh, and then you just kind of like tabulate them, right? Not Correct. saying that accountant jobs are. No. But they are. But it, well, really, <laughs> really. Uh, mm. But no, what, what I was trying to say is that, I mean, that, that was, you know, the pinnacle of stress at In that a point. Uh, and then now today, everyone, experiences stress. stress in their own certain way. But I feel like because of that, and also because of the fact that maybe our tolerance towards stress and towards the life's getting hard, I'm out. <laughs> mm. what, what can you say about that? What do you think after looking at people around you? I'm sure you have like friends who are like, oh, I'm jumping out. Well, I don't know. I think I, I'll give you two examples. I mm. think there was one time um, my sister, who's a little bit younger than me, mm. uh, she started her first job and she was stressed out. Mm. And I really cannot remember what it was, but it was a little bit of a small, minute little thing. Mm. Well, not super minute, but in the greater scheme of things, not the big deal. Mm. But um, 
And then my dad, who rarely snaps at us, to be fair. My dad is very much a, we are all daddy's little girls. Mm-hmm. Um, he just looked at her and he just went, get over it. Oh, wow. You can't say and that to her. No, nowadays. you can't. And and she just kind of just sat quietly. She wasn't happy. None of us would be. Yeah. But then after that, she kind of just got over it. Mm. Uh, do you think that we can say that to young people today? Just get over it. Why not? I don't know. I people don't think we can anymore, man. No, I get that people are yeah. sensitive. And I get that maybe... But also when we were when we were growing up and see now I really sound old when I say things like this. Um, but I the one thing I admire about the younger generation now is that when I speak to my friends, mm. I have friends who have kids who are graduating from university. Mm. But the one thing that's amazing about it was the fact that they'll tell me things like and when I ask them if they're going somewhere for their graduation, I say, oh, what are they graduating from? They'll say things like he's doing a degree in English, he's doing mm. a degree in philosophy. Mm. These were things that were never an option for me. That's right, yeah. I had, it was doctor, lawyer, accountant, na, 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 that kind of thing. It it shows that that society is progressing. It is. Right, right. Because in any society, the first... The first uh, few jobs are the necessities. Of course, you the have to put food build, on the yeah, table, correct. you build your-, your The your nation needs to be built, you know, course, the engineers, the doctors. And then I guess we are in a time now where all those jobs have been filled. So there's time for the artsy fartsies. Well, but this is the thing. So I remember having a conversation with someone and I was saying, I admire, and I was saying exactly the same thing. I mm. said, I admire the fact that people now are, allow, are allowing their children to explore so much more. Right. Mm. But at the same time, if you look at a lot of the top, I think McKinsey came up or something like that. Mm. One of the consulting firms and stuff like that. Mm. They don't only, ha- like if they they if they if had a client who was in the banking industry, they mm. don't only hire someone who was in finance. They might hire someone from an English degree. The right. reason why you went to university, the, the ultimate goal of going to university in those days mm. was not to get a degree to get a job. It was to get knowledge. Yes. It was to wow. understand how, yeah. where your place in the world was. Wow. Mm. It's, and yes, I mean, okay, I don't really want a heart surgeon who's done an English degree. I get that. Yes. <laughs> Nor do I want someone who represents me in court who has a philosophy degree. Hmm. But you went to university to expand your mind. Yeah. Mm. To come out of your bubble. Yes. So that you will not only just think that one way. You le- you get your experiences, yeah. be it bad or good. Yeah. Um, but you learn. Yeah. You will take a tumble and you learn. But the one thing I find is, is that with this allowing of people to be that way now, which I think a lot of people, a lot of parents are allowing their children mm. to do. There's also the fear that, oh goodness, I, I'm i scared for you at the same time because you don't have a safety net. Mm. So therefore, I will wrap you in bubble wrap while you're doing your... your That's um, a very good point. I, I might be far off the mark. I think you spot but, on, man. <laughs> right, spot right. on. But I think that's basically it. And that's also why when you come out of university, because you've been so well taken care of- In the yeah. bubble. Mm-hmm. That you, it's a little bit harder. Yeah. Right, right. For you to deal with the fact that, oh, mommy, mommy used to tell me I'm wonderful. My mommy never <laughs> scold me. How can Correct. you scold me? Correct. Yes. Wow. And mm. then you'd be like, oh no. So all my life I've been told I'm wonderful, which you are prob- you probably are. You probably are. Just like everyone else. Oh, Correct. <laughs> but then you have 20,000 kids graduating in your year right. who were also told they were wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So then what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Oh my. Whenever people talk about this, I always remember, as so I know Chris Brock, he's a comedian. Yes. Uh, in Tambourine, his stand-up, one of okay, his stand-up. Okay, I've not so watched okay? that yet. Yeah. He, he talks to his daughter and he set his daughter down to how, no, because he was talking about how do you train your kids to do the world. Yes. And he set the standard from a very young age. So he tells his daughter that, dear, like, babe, people on this side of the door, before you go out into the world, we, people over here love you. Yes. Even some people over here aren't so sure anymore. <laughs> but <laughs> the true. minute you step outside the door, no one is going to give two flying yes. horse shits about who you are. Yes. Yeah. And that's the reality that he sets at home. And it's true. A lot of kids now, I think I think between the time when, uh, I think during the 1990s or the 2000s, that bubble of people, the, the parents who were raising the kids at that time of life, were very uber positive. Yes. Like extremely like, you are so beautiful, you are so handsome, you are so amazing. And these kids grew up in this bubble where they were like heroes. Yes. And then after college, when their hero the bubble, bubble popped, popped um, oh well, good lord, the, the world is, 
Unfortunately, all the other hero in their bubbles came out too. Yeah. yeah. And you're all in the world together. Correct. We are. So right. your bubbles are all banging against each other. Yeah. It, is, it is like, there's so, like, there's so interesting because like, you know, when, when uh, we grew up with our dads uh, and mom's uh, era, they had no choice. They had no choice Agreed. in terms of career. They did, couldn't yes. pursue an arts degree. Correct. They did not complain. They did. And the lack of choice built character. In because a way. you had to do what you had to do. Mm. Yes. But today, with the amount of choice that you have, you can switch a degree every few months. Mm -hmm. You can come out and start working in two years, one year, half a year. Ooh. That never, I think people are feeling the stress right now because they've never committed and built commitment to a discipline. Do you, then, think, do you think that's true? I think there is an element of that. But at mm. the same time as well, I think the stress as well, and I'm glad you pointed that out, is the mm. fact that <clears throat> and I think earlier we were talking about this as well, was the fact that, for example, the both of you, mm. you came out, you're relatively young, you've accomplished more than what most people my age would have done. Some oh are, well, to be fair, some of my other friends have accomplished a lot more than you guys. I'm but anyway. Sure. <laughs> nope, nope, no, no, no <laughs> surprise there. No surprise there. We've really not done much. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, it's amazing because this is the one thing I liked about looking, and that's what maybe keeps me going, is mm. the fact that, I see people of this age group and maybe even younger and you guys are not afraid to go out and do it on your own. Mm. And I think that's probably going to contribute to the stress because the difference is, is that I've had years of working in an office. It's a mm. relatively stable environment. Uh, I know where my next paycheck's coming from, mm. when, um, when my annual leave, I, everything was set into place. Right. Whereas for you guys, a lot of it is very freelance driven. Yeah. It's based on your own time. Five you years, no annual leave. <laughs> that yeah. is very true. Yeah. But you build something that you love. You right, build right. something that is yours. Right. Whereas I think maybe people from my parents' generation, even your generation, your parents' generation, sorry, right. not your generation, they didn't have that ownership, Correct. which they probably would have liked. Mm. Um, but maybe in a very weird way, maybe not even have the guts to do. Mm. So it takes guts to do what this generation is doing. Mm -hmm. even so on, that's probably contributing. Even to on that point, the current workforce has managed to skew it in a different direction. Like you say, like our parents never had a choice, mm -hmm. uh, but no matter what, they stuck to it. Because I that's think the true. sense of responsibility, responsibility yeah. was very heavy on so our too, parent yeah. generation. Well, you also have to look at, like say for example, my dad, mm. um, he had to put, Food, food on the table. table. Correct. He yeah. had to make sure his two daughters got educated. Correct. Correct. So it's not really about relationship, it's about role. role. Your role in the family. Correct. And what right? you were supposed to do. So my right. mother, when my dad had to move because of work, right. so my mother had to quit a job because there was no other job right. in the area where we were moving to. So she just did it. Mm. And she just knew her next role and she'd never cooked a, a day in her life. But now right. she's just like whipping up stuff and making sure the family was fed. We yeah. went to school. So it's it's just getting on with it. Right. Yeah. And then you got us on the other extreme of it, which is like, you're doing something you love, you can amazing, build what you yes. want. I mean, that's where people are looking in. All right. Yes. Then you have people in the middle who are getting it wrong. And they, they, the statement I'm going to use is they confuse passion for incompetence. Right. Because, because a lot of people might come in and say like, oh, I'm very stressed out. This might not be my passion. Agreed. Right. They might come in for two weeks and like, I'm so stressed out. Maybe this is not meant for me. <laughs> like, and, and as someone in your position right now, what do you think is that that the point that, that, yeah, that yeah what why why does this happen why do people confuse stress that builds character with maybe this is not my passion <laughs> you, know? you know i used to grumble about this a right. lot <clears throat> and i find that people the expectations on you guys are tremendous mm. i remember when i first started working um my first job mm. And I, I saw an advertisement in the newspaper and I looked at my dad. It was for a Ford car Ooh. hatchback, mm. just Ooh. randomly. Not sponsored? Well, no, 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 not, not sponsored. sponsored. No, we would love Ford <laughs> if you want to reach out and do anything. I'm, I'm helping down. them out here. Oh, oh I'm down. Right. But I saw, a, I saw an ad in the newspaper and I looked at my dad and I, I remembered at that time, I went to quite a good school mm. and a lot of my friends were quite privileged to have right. an extra car in the household which they were driving. <sighs> so I of course, wanted to have my own car. Mm. So I looked at my dad and said, hey, this car doesn't look too expensive. Mm. Can I have one? Mm. And then my dad said, do you, he says, he looked at me and he just went, okay, you can go and pay for it. Ooh. And I just, uh, that right, was, right. that was reality. Yeah. 
But now, wow. when you graduate, you get a car. You get a car, yes. <laughs> even at twenty-one years yeah. old. Yeah, I had to fight for my mobile right, phone. Right. It uh, took same. Me really? You know when no. I was, I, when I was eighteen, <laughs> eighteen to twenty-one, I still had to ask my dad privileges to use internet. And he only yeah. gave me 20 minutes a day. He, we, we, he will only At let us 18. play- 18. Okay, he I got will, an hour, yeah. so I beat you. Okay, yeah. <laughs> he, he, he will only let us play the PlayStation yeah, yeah. for like 20 minutes at a time. My dad bought a Sega and he oh. would let us play for it, play with it. See, at least if he was fe- no, if he was feeling it. If he was not it. using yeah. it. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, okay. So, you know, we, <laughs> we, we, we do very well on this podcast highlighting the plight of the world. Hmm. Um, but I feel, you know, as we end the, the year, we got to give some solutions, which I feel this is, oh, Mailing's so good at this because she reminds me <laughs> to do it very often. Um, with all this stress, right? With all these, you know, the, the things that make you feel unhappy at I don't workplace. work anymore. Um, I mean, we, there, uh, there is no definite answer to whether what you're doing is, right. is, is really justifiably like stress or you're just not, yeah, because you're just not putting these in that days, it's too we dangerous. Don't know. It's too dangerous to assume we yeah, know your We stress. can't. We can't say. We can't <laughs> say suck it up. We, we can't. We no. can't. Actually, Actually, I would not, like to. You know what? Yeah. Suck it up. No, that's I, not fair. I can't, I can't no. say that. You can because this podcast is a choice, and if you chose to tune into it, you chose to suck it, it up. Suck it up. <laughs> but you know what? Above above offering you that suck it up uh, piece of advice, um, this is something that okay. This this is also the reason why Mailing's here. Mailing's very good at handling work life balance. Uh, something that I feel that because we're so connected and we don't put down our phones, uh, our generation has a very big problem with this because we're always trying to be connected, whether it's social media, whether mm. it's through our emails and stuff. And yeah. we, and, and you know, like we spoke about at the start of the podcast about how there is a expectancy of um, an immediate reply. This has, like, mm. it, it's not even like something that we, we chose, right? It's, we, we grew up born, with it. We were like literally born out of the womb yeah. with, no, the generation now. Yeah, the generation now is born with tablets with, with their, attached to their Correct. backs. Correct. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> and so, so maybe for everyone who's listening to this, and even if you're feeling like you've burnt out through the year, and you're at a point where stress is so high for you, you're bleeding out through your nipples. Okay. We're not sure about that one. Ooh. Um, <laughs> might need to see a doctor. <laughs> Mailing, how do you how do you disconnect? Mm. And you do this very well. You are very intentional <laughs> about your disconnecting times. Mm-hmm. But that's the key word. You have to be intentional about your. It's so you can't exact. And it started as a small little experiment with myself. I know the feeling if you left your phone at home, I still do it. Mm. You have to drive back immediately. The moment it it dawns on you that you left your phone at home and my poor husband has had to drive to the office and oh, deliver my oh phone my at, on several occasions oh because I'm goodness. a real fluffhead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I get that. Um, and I understand that feeling. However, right. I it started first as me just maybe putting it away for putting my phone away, putting my, and, and closing my laptop. Mm. And when I say I close my laptop and <laughs> these guys know it because sometimes when they're trying to get me in the middle of the night, it's very difficult. It's impossible. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't it's try to get anyone in the middle of the night. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I try to make it an intentional thing that once right. I finish my work, I finish my work. Mm. I go home. There's a time for work and there's a time for you. There's a time for, and your loved ones. Yeah, um, and your loved ones didn't deserve as much attention from you as your work. Mm. Both are equally important. I'm not saying that one is more important than the other. Um, but at the same time, the one thing I also realize is that, and some people might and might not agree with me. It depends. Everyone has a different working style. But I'm very intentional when I'm at my work. Yeah. So I don't you really. <laughs> thank you. Um, I try very hard to make sure that when I'm at work, I'm productive. There was one time um, <laughs> I I tried to surprise. Uh, mailing for a belated <laughs> birthday at the that office. That was not good. <laughs> she was in the office, and 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 I we uh, I have a friend there, and and we planned the whole like we're gonna come in and surprise you. And I came in and I surprised her because she turned around. She's like, she looked at me. I'm like, surprise. You're let's not go, in the schedule. Let's go have bre- Let's go have birthday <laughs> lunch together. No. <laughs> This is not a confirmed meeting. And I'm just like, no, but Mele, it's your birthday. <laughs> Don't get that. Yeah, no. You're it's feeling to understand the concept of surprise. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I <laughs> yeah. that. She looked at me, she frowned, she was like, I'm only going to give you 45 minutes. <laughs> oh my God. She's so intentional about both her work and her rest, which right. is so impressive. But it's it's important to me. So mm. 
I mean, I want to respect other people's time as much as I want them to respect mine. Wow. Mm. So I'm sorry if, no, for the surprise. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's true. It's true. It is very true. Intentionality so, goes a long way. Correct. So <laughs> if I want way. to see, and I and I and I like the fact that I've had some bosses who have also taught me this. Yes. So, <laughs> so if I set a meeting with you from two to three p.m. Let's honor that, man. I want you. I want so to honor that. Can we book you in advance for a surprise around the birthday time? That's you might terrible. be able to. We have, might have to. You might be able she hates surprises. <laughs> we'll give you. We'll give you a range of an you hour can. within this week. Okay. So you know, oh, but maybe you can give us. Yes. And also those who are listening in today, what are some small, medium, and big steps for disconnecting or being intentional with our rest and separating that work-life thing. So like you said, for example, like if, when, when you're at work, right? Mm. Like um, you, 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 you put away the distractions. Mm. You, you go in 100%. Leave your phone. You leave your phone, turn it upside down, Close silent or whatever, and, and I, like get shit done. Yes. Give it to your friends. Um, and, but what about like after? What, what can you- what, what like sort when I go steps? home? Yeah, mm. what, what sort of steps can you give us to so, try? So after work, the one thing I do is I will close my laptop. I put it in my desk. I literally will clear, clear up my desk. And I mean, you've seen my desk. It's actually quite clean. <laughs> and so it's clean. empty of stuff. Mm. I have nothing on my... T- well, except for a few knickknacks. Yeah. Mm. And then I go home. I have a routine that I stick to. Um, mm. And I think that's very... It makes me sound a little bit crazy. Mm. And I think it is a little bit. <laughs> mm. But I have a routine I stick to. So for me, health is very important. Um, I make sure I either have a walk a run, I go to the gym, I do something that just cleans my, like just clears out my head. Yeah. Um, on the weekends, I like to get a bit of sunshine. And then when I go on my holidays, for me, that's really a time to just yeah. really- Get crazy. Well, oh, sorry. Nope. be <laughs> in the moment with my friends or yeah. yeah. my family. Yeah. It's yeah. the ship. <laughs> it's the ship. That's where mailing was. Uh, yeah, <laughs> mailing was the DJ, man. Do you oh, see that? Oh my God. <laughs> okay. okay. No, well, that's that, a lie. So, so, so that- I guess the routine thing helps a lot. And I know a lot of people try to have that workout regimen in the day. Mm. But it's a, it's a simple, I read somewhere like, I mean, and it, it sounds crazy, but I read somewhere and I, and I do it now religiously almost. I put it into my phone. It is like, you know how you put into your phone and your agenda or whatever it is mm. that you have? Mm. Two o'clock meeting with client, mm. correct? Yeah. Why don't you put in there? Seven o'clock. Watch gym up. time. Oh, oh, I was going to say okay. watch, you know, watch well, YouTube well, for like watch half you, an hour. Well, okay, maybe not YouTube, mm. or whatever. Mm. So schedule that in because wow. it is just as important to you right. as it is to me, to your work, to meet Be a client. Be intentional, guys. So yeah. that's, that's okay. And maybe to, for me, I think to tidy up the other end of it, right? That's how you intentionally manage stress. Right? In a the weird ones way, that, yes. the ones mm. that you can manage. Yeah. But mm. for those people that we've been talking about, you know, when it comes to work yes, and stress correct. and everything, but so, I have been fortunate. You are right. Correct. You are. You are yeah, fortunate. I'm fortunate to are. be in this place. Sorry. To be uh, that. And what about those people who are, let's say, fresh grads doing their first job? They are stressed. Stress is a no, no. It's a non-manageable thing. Yeah. It is something that you can't you can't plan for. Of course. In those situations, especially maybe let's just target the people oh who goodness. have, who are feeling like I'm only six months in my job, but you know what? I can't do it. Mm. Suck it up. What, what, <laughs> yeah. I mean, what would the mailing who is running around lot 10 say to these people, you know? What about that kind of stress? I always, the, the funniest thing about it was that it was very stressful doing it. The mailing and running around Sungai Wang. Not, yes, Sungai not Wang, so atas sorry. yet. Sorry, sorry, you're right. uh, running around Sungai Wang at that time. Mm. She, yes, she was very stressed, mm. but she was very lucky to be in a job that she loved. There but more go. importantly, and that's where the passion comes into play, mm. yes? Yeah. Um, but more importantly, she recognized the fact that she was also quite lucky to have the opportunity. There you go. So I guess it's yeah. a balance of whether or not, I'm not saying kill yourself oh, to mm. do it. You did yeah. not hear that here. No, yeah. of course. No, she didn't no. say um, that. And honestly speaking, I will. I would never advocate that. Yeah. But I think you need to realize, and I say this to a lot of people that I meet who ask questions as well. And I will say this early on in your career, you will have to push. Yeah. You will have to go a little bit out of the way and you'll be in your uncomfortable zones because you would, but that's part of the learning right, process. Right. Wow. But you also need to understand from your point of view, whether it's, whether this is the journey that you want to be on, you need, and, and it's not mm. an easy thing. I can't give you a, a, a piece of paper that tells you the steps. I've been very fortunate in my life to mm. have met people who have encouraged, pointed mm. me in the right directions. But at the same time, I also, you have to take 
also a little bit of a risk, mm -hmm. I think, in trusting these people. Mm. A lot of the themes in my life has been about trust. Mm. Well, I.e. Yes. I.e. suck us. it up. <laughs> I.e. us also. Suck it up and do the work. Uh, well, that one's still, um, pivot, that's under review. <laughs> I mean, to pivot on it, um, my, my, my friend, my, I mean, my friends and I, uh, my degree friends and I, we're talking about a lot of these problems these days. And maybe to wrap it up, um, a lot of people's philosophies now, a lot of the perspectives of their psyche and well-being, it's self-centered. It so is, like if yes. you're in a position and you're really self-centered or you're focused on your own self, you're going to say like, I'm stressed. Mm -hmm. I'm not happy here. But what you said just now was good. Many people don't, they're not appreciative of the chance they have to work. Yeah, Agreed. People don't realize that it's hard finding a job in this economy. Yeah. And usually the appreciation is is lost yes. and you focus on the stress. Yeah. So maybe all you just need, you guys just gotta be a bit more thankful where you are. You have the opportunity to learn. You've had the opportunity to have someone hire you, yeah. to, to be in a place that pays you. Yeah. And the trade-off for that is really just doing work. Yeah. That's the work. I, but at the same it, time, mm. you should always know your worth. Oh, of wow. course. Don't I'm sorry. I That's find so that sometimes good. people exploit. Yeah. So, and I don't like that. I mean, yeah, we can't, we can't talk yeah. about people who exploit people here, but we can at least help you guys. Caleb just behind the camera. Yeah. He's been a victim. <laughs> it's resonating with him. It's, it's resonating with him. Yeah. He's, he's been a victim, man. No, because Caleb, like if you are like Caleb and Caleb is the one that gives and gives and gives and gives yes. and gives, people will exploit you. Yeah, there are people who just take yeah. these but, things, you know. But you know what? That is a topic for another day. <laughs> Mailing, thank you it so is. much for being here today. <laughs> if I hope you guys took all that away because there's mm. so much truth about being in intentional about your time at work, your time at home, and also just being grateful for where you are at this season of time. Mailing, you have been just a blessing. I can't wait for more podcasts with you next year. Could have drank you in for more. By the way, he did this unscheduled as well. You see, that's just, <laughs> our love runs deep. Guys, yes. it's been a pleasure having you guys listen in to the This Week's Table Talk. If you guys want more that's Table right. Talk, you can catch us on Spotify, Apple Music, and YouTube for more. Have a happy Christmas. Any Christmas plans, Mailing? Um, she already planned it. It's I already, already yes, schedule. it already planned. It does not involve my phone and it doesn't involve a lot of things. It doesn't gonna, involve us. Nope. It not at all. Yeah, it's just me and my world. Set. And yeah. a tree yeah. set. That's right, guys. Set your calendar. Schedule the podcast every Monday. Wills. This is actually a good job, podcast team. Consistency Monday. Yeah. Come on. Come on, 40 guys. episodes in. Yeah, happy 40 episode. Pra. Four, uh, four zero. Four zero. Shayi, shayi. Anyway. That's not even. We will see you next time. Tigers, if you're listening, drop a question. We might just be talking about you. Have a great Christmas. And if you are coming to our Christmas party on the 20th of December, we'll <laughs> see you there. If you don't know what about it, what what is this? Why are you not following us on IG? Huh? Why? Mainly, can we give your Instagram handle away for people to follow? Nope. Nope. <laughs> if, you're smart, <laughs> if you're smart, you'll you find would, it. Yeah, if you're smart, you would have seen her on IG. We'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.